trudge. It's a trudging. Yeah. You just. You ready to finish this? Let's get it on. We were really tired and we were really hot and I got all sunburned and had all these mosquito bites and I just really wanted a shower and a warm bed so we turned around and went home. Yeah, they called it seeing the elephant running into something bigger than you could handle really was, was what it did. Most of the turnbacks happened before Fort Laramie. Once people got that far, they, they generally went all the way. After days of bed rest and hot showers, we pick up the trail in Martin's Cove, some 55 miles west of Casper, Wyoming. A large number of the immigrants on the trail were Latter-day Saints, or Mormons, who were fleeing mob violence and government persecution back east. Many of these people came west using just one of these. One of the advantages of a handcart is they were a very lightweight little vehicle, little two-wheeled vehicle. And so unless you were pulling up a steep slope or anything, they had very little rolling resistance. Could only bring, I think, 17 pounds of provisions, and that really wouldn't be much more than the clothing on their back. Though pulling a handcart may not seem as fun as riding in a wagon, we quickly learned that many people ended up walking along the Oregon Trail anyway. If you've ever ridden in those wagons, they're not very comfortable and you get bounced around a lot. So people usually walked if they could. Before we begin our trek, we're given some disquieting news. We have a lot of rattlesnakes. I don't know if uh, you've been told. I saw you talking to someone there. Um, this is Rattlesnake Pass. These are the Rattlesnake Mountains, and we have a lot of rattlesnakes here. So somebody on the trail. Uh, you... Is it hot? No. Huh. It's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, not bad at all. Despite the relative ease of pulling the handcart, Martin's Cove is home to one of the worst disasters of the trail. Essentially from that one incident was the single largest loss of life from any one incident during the entire immigration period. Are we there yet? Should have gotten off. The spot we're headed to is the same site where a company of Mormon immigrants, running dangerously late in the year, did their best to take shelter in a vicious snowstorm. I don't remember this part in the video game. That once the Martin Company resumed their journey and headed for Salt Lake City, that virtually every single campsite between Martin's Cove and Salt Lake City uh, was a burial ground for uh, a few people. Ironically, as we advance on our destination, an unholy storm approaches. It started raining and started hailing a little bit, and now we're here taking uh, shelter. The hail welts. I think they're freckles, huh? I don't know. They're kind of big and kind of pink. After the storm leaves, we make the final leg of our journey to the cove. Attendants show us a tree stump believed to have been cut for firewood as immigrants suffered in the freezing temperatures. They took those that died there and they carried them up over the saddle at the top of the cove and they buried them in the snow on the other side. They couldn't bury them into the ground because the ground was frozen. And so they carried those people to the other side and buried them. And when they came back, they could hear the wolves. There was a lot of wolves around here then and they could hear the wolves coming down to devour the bodies of those that had passed away. There was this guy that kept getting me, like melon stopped, and then finally, like, There was a tremendous sacrifice uh, of humanity here, and the people that did sacrifice their lives are the ones that helped settle the, the West. The solemnness of the location and another storm head of black clouds are all the encouragement we need to get out of there. We've been on the road for what seems like forever now. We've seen the ice slew in the middle of nowhere, where ice used to be quarried out of the prairie grass in the middle of summer. South Pass, where wagons struggled to get over the meanest part of the Rockies. And Church Buttes, this weird clay formation where Brigham Young is said to have delivered a sermon. We were almost finished before we hit one of the weirder sites along the trail at Fort Bridger. And Jim Bridger opened that up specifically as a trading post for pioneers. Every post in the west that had been built before that had been built for the fur trade. Fort Bridger was specifically built to serve the immigration, and it marked a major transition in the history of the west. 
he'd have a blacksmith shop here. He was a, you know, um, a blacksmith, so he could fix some of the things. Um, then, of course, with all the lumber around here, they could also make a lot of the wood parts on the wagons as well. Um, you know, some of the things would be uh, trading out their old, worn-out horses or oxen. Despite the historic significance of the site, what we're really interested in is a small grave. Here lies Thornburg, the dog. Credited with stopping a knife fight, catching thieves, and even saving a child from drowning. This dog did more stuff in his life than I am ever going to do in mine. Despite his resume, our dogs remain unimpressed. Well, there you go. By the way, Thornburg's master is believed to rest in Salt Lake City in an unmarked grave. We drive west to one of the last visible sets of Oregon Trail ruts before leaving Wyoming. There's a school of thought that tries to say if this is a uniquely American thing, I'm not sure if it is or not, but that uh, people just want a little space between themselves and other people, and there's definitely that. And uh, Americans have a wanderlust, they always have had, and, and this was part of that, of course. Uh, want, wanting to see what's over the hill, you know, look beyond the horizon. We're always Going from here to there just to see what's on the other side. We, we always want to we travel around the world to see, we want to see what's there. Most of the sites visited in this program are open to the public for free or for minimal fees. To learn more about them and other Oregon Trail sites, visit our website.